We're going to start lesson 10, and this is our last lesson using just the lower manual. We're going to start it with some interval expansion, only this time the interval will expand a little farther than it did previously. I just had you moving a second earlier in the book, and now you're going to move a fourth and a third. I want you to step up to the keyboard and put your mallets on an E and a B. This is a fourth apart. And when you expand the interval up to the sixth, you're going to move your outer mallet up to a G. The same motion applies as what you were doing with a second. Your index finger will extend itself a little bit, your thumb may move slightly up the stick, and the badge of the mallet will have a slight rotation on it. This is what the first measure looks like with this type of interval expansion. As you progress through this exercise, you're going to move up the keyboard in a stepwise motion. I always want you to start with the interval of a fourth. Mallet four will move out to a sixth, it will come back to the original fourth, and then mallet three will move down so that you're at another sixth before moving back to the original fourth. It's important that you keep your hand at nice and relaxed that your elbow is at your side, and that it is supporting the wrist when you play these double verticals. You'll notice that there's a lot of motion in your hands with this exercise. It may be that you need to start by just practicing the outward expansion with mallet four. Do that several times till that's comfortable, then practice the motion with mallet three as it expands down the keyboard. Once both of those feel comfortable isolated, then you can go ahead and put them into one entire measure. There will be a little bit of arm movement as you move to that sixth interval. You still want your arm to bisect the interval at a sixth. When it comes back to the fourth, it's relatively bisecting that interval as well. And then when you move down, you may need to shift your body weight over to your left more so that you are still bisecting the interval with your elbow. Interval expansion is a great exercise to practice even away from the instrument. You really need to understand the hand motions first before worrying too much about the notes on the keyboard. So if you're watching TV, this would be a great thing to practice on the floor or on your arm, any place you have a surface that you can just bounce your sticks off of to make sure you understand how the hands move and make this interval ex uh, expand and contract will be very helpful. Once you understand that, it's easier to bring it down to the keyboard and then work on the accuracy of your pitches. This is one of those concepts that's going to take you a while to work on. It is hard. You have seen it before, but the motion was so small, it wasn't as hard as it is presented in these exercises. I would highly recommend you do this first exercise many times, both in the right hand and almost more importantly in the left hand till it feels really comfortable before moving on to the other interval expansion exercises. It's really important that this is done well because you see it all over the literature in the future. And if you're not comfortable playing with it in these easy exercises, it's going to be even harder when you actually try and do it in literature. So take this one slow, a lot of left hand work in addition to the right hand work before moving on to the other interval expansion exercises. These next two exercises are similar to the first one, but we're using different intervals. When you have to have a narrow interval that moves to a larger interval, you really need to focus on your arm position so that you are accommodating the correct beating spot. When you start with the interval of a second, your arm will be at a slight angle away from your body. Then when you expand to the interval of a fifth, that arm needs to come back in closer to your body so that it then bisects the interval. 
If you don't do that, your second is going to have two completely different beating spots. So the arm position is slightly different in this exercise than it was in the first exercise. Let me demonstrate this narrow to wide interval expansion. Notice when I play that second, and every time I play that second, my elbow is behind the wrist, away from my body a little bit. As you go throughout this exercise, it will slightly move in and out from your body. It's not a big motion. It's just enough to make sure these mallet heads are staying over the center of the resonators. It might be worthwhile to start this exercise with only the first two intervals just to get the feel of where that elbow is going to be. You might play the second and then the fifth nice and slow, slowly getting that faster so you understand the motion that's required in your elbow. I'll demonstrate what that looks like. At this low tempo, you want to really be careful not to move your weight back and forth. It might be easy to do this at a slow tempo, but you're not going to have time to do it at a fast tempo. So try and keep your weight evenly distributed between your feet and just use your arm and your elbow to get yourself around these intervals. You should feel yourself progressing through these exercises at a similar rate. They're pretty much the same technique. All you're worried about is the position of your arm and where it's going to be placed depending on the interval that you're doing. But you should be feeling that they're a similar concept behind each one of these exercises.